Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! that it, it's hard to disagree with the principle of freedom of speech, but, Toby, if we start oxygenating views that encourage a change in behaviour that leads to a greater number of deaths, that is dangerous. That's true, uh, Emily, but the, the point is we don't know uh, with any degree of certainty, certainly not enough certainty, to start censoring people what kind of behaviour does lead to greater public harm. The position of the lockdown sceptics, and let's not conflate lockdown sceptics with COVID deniers. No one's denying that we're in the midst of a COVID pandemic, or at least no one that contributes to the lockdownskeptics.org website. The argument we make and have been making from the very beginning is that the collateral damage done by lockdowns, Toby. the harms that lockdowns <laughs> cause, is greater no. than the harms they prevent. You were, so just, I, you I were just arguing that. You, to... I have your article here from the 25th of June, and you say the much ballyhooed second spike has refused to materialise. The virus has all but disappeared. And then you say it's becoming clear that the social distancing rules, even the new one metre rule, are unnecessary. And then you accuse the scientists, the chief scientists, of overplaying it so it doesn't hurt their reputation. It's not denying COVID per se, but it seems to be ignoring that it's actually amongst us. Well, I think it, it, is, it is certainly um, a, a constantly evolving uh, virus, um, and it's quite hard uh, at any one point to get a clear and accurate well, picture of it. Let me just go back to your words there. I mean, you know, you say it's constantly evolving, but would you take any of it back? The second spike has, remo has refused to materialise and the one metre rule is unnecessary. I mean, is there not a moment of contrition from you that you wrote this well, stuff down and published it? Hands up, I got that wrong, Emily. Uh, bearing in mind, of course, that whilst the hospitals are full of people with COVID, they can't actually start treating people with other diseases because they're overrun. Ian, isn't it important to debate this stuff, even if you disagree with it? Well, we can debate it if we like. I mean, it, we're not under much threat of Toby or his allies convincing very many people, and indeed they haven't. I mean, you look at the polling today from YouGov, it's 85% of the population supporting the new lockdown. You see the same thing pretty much on vaccines, about 70% support. It's across age groups, across leave-remain divide, across left-right. The reason for that is because these guys have been proved wrong every step of the way. They were proved wrong on the idea that there wouldn't be a further spike. They pointed towards Sweden for months and months. You'll notice no one's talking about Sweden right now. Sweden now has 10 times the death rate of neighbouring Norway, neighbouring Finland. In fact, Norway actually started putting troops on the border. Things were getting so severe. Its own king said that they'd made terrible mistakes. Its own prime minister said that they'd made terrible mistakes. They talk about economic consequences. You look across the world, over and over, the countries, if there was an economic consequence, if it really was a binary to say that clamping down on, um, on COVID means that we will experience a more severe uh, economic downturn, then why is it that countries like Peru, like Spain, like the UK have the worst downturns, um, okay. the worst economic downturns, let, let, the me, higher COVID death rates? Let rate. me go back to you, Toby. Uh, the, I want yeah. Korea there was a, there was, to that question, Emily. There was, a, there was a tweet before we came on air from Michael Rosen, the children's author, saying if you'd been in charge, Toby, of ventilators, you would have switched them off and someone like him would have died. Hmm. Well, that's simply not true. And, uh, Ian, the reason um, that uh, Spain, Peru and the UK have suffered economically is precisely because they followed the advice of SAGE to impose lockdowns. I would say that the advocates of lockdowns have now been proved definitively wrong. We've tried it in this country in March. We tried it again in it, November. It brought the R8 uh, down. Boris put almost half the country into tier four. It doesn't seem to have worked. Surely a much more rational, proportionate strategy would have been what, what's described in the Great Barrington Declaration as um, uh, focus protection, in which we protect, we shield uh, those who are vulnerable to the disease, the over 75s, people with underlying okay. health conditions, and let ordinary people just go about their lives. Uh, why don't we try that strategy, given that the lockdown strategy has comprehensively failed? Well, if it, it hadn't, it, failed, it worked. Why are, We're out we of are? time. It did, I have to say, it did work back in March. It brought the R8 down from uh, three it at was, the time it was to 0.6. <laughs>
David Phillips is battling COVID on two fronts. He's keen to keep infection rates low at his school in Chilwell in Nottingham, but is also having to deal with threats from anti-vax campaigners. Receptions took a call and, and came through and reported it to me that they'd had a person on the phone, male voice, basically telling me to watch my effing back. Said that's, What they said was, tell David to watch his effing back three times um, and then put the phone down. What's your reaction to that? We deal with difficult people sometimes. That's the nature of what schools are. Um, but actually, when, when you've got somebody ringing up, allegedly, you know, making a threat towards you, then uh, you know, to a certain extent, you have to take it seriously. The police were notified, but Mr Phillips doesn't believe the threat came from a parent. But things didn't stop there. Half the pupils here took up the offer of a Covid jab at school on Monday. On the same day, Mr Phillips got a fake NHS email with a consent form attached for parents. It was written in, in a, a, a very different language from the kind of previous emails that we've had. It was written in the kind of language that you would not expect to be out of, uh, out of sorts from the normal email that we'd get from the NHS or from, from other professional services. What does that say to you about the people who've organised this? Well, there's, there's clearly been an element of coordination uh, and, a, and a campaign which is more sophisticated than what we'd seen in schools before. The fake email has been sent to schools across the country. It links deaths of children to the vaccine. But experts say that's simply not true. There have been no recorded deaths associated with the vaccine in children anywhere in the world. Um, and we do know that children can and do unfortunately die from COVID. You know, we've had 15 deaths in 10 to 19 year olds since the summer here in England. A teaching union says it's been inundated with emails from secondary schools targeted by anti-vax campaigners. Ahead in St Albans wrote, at a nearby school, anti-vaxxers gained access to the reception screaming and shouting. Fifteen had picketed the school the day before. Another in Winchester said, we came into school to find the external fences littered with anti-vaccine posters. And a head in Glastonbury said, we've had protesters at our school gates twice now. The second time they've been much more antagonistic. Oh, I think the number of schools that have been targeted by the anti-vax campaigners is very significant. I don't think there are many people working in school leadership, many head teachers who will not have received email letters, whether it comes from a legal background or a parent background. Teachers accept every parent has the right to say no to their child getting vaccinated. But there's deep concern about anti-vax campaigners, including Piers Corbyn, taking their protests to the school gates. It's about the kids getting vaccines, so have your mom read about it. Anti-vax campaigners have leafleted outside this school in Nottingham. Only 11% of pupils here have taken up the offer of a jab. I'm going to speak to somebody who, who is a retired police officer now, Ian Thompson, calling us from Wiltshire. Ian, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ah, you heard that email. Yes, yes, I, I, I completely agree. But I do think there's a, a degree of uh, hysteria being fostered by the media over there, similar to the uh, hysteria generated by the media over the fuel crisis. Uh, but obviously no one can condone the actions of this uh, rogue police officer. Mm -hmm. It's uh, absolutely shocking. But um, no... Well, how, how, how rogue is he, Ian? Just, I mean, just... How rogue is he? Um, because, you know, we, it's not that long ago that we heard of the case of Nicole Smallman and Biba Henry, the two murdered sisters who police officers were taking grotesque selfies with their bodies. How yeah. rogue are they? Well, uh, the, the, in any organisation, you'll find that there are people that are rogues. I mean, look at the BBC, Martin Bashir or the, the press over the hacking of the uh, telephones of a murdered girl's parents. Mm. I mean, every organisation, no matter how many tests you take, can possibly weed out someone that might go rogue. Mm. But, uh, but when, when those cases, by and large, come, and the ones that you've mentioned about the BBC, there, there are inquiries that took massive inquiries. And, and you know, people are either lose their jobs or, or there are different structures put in place now you've got a fight going on at the moment uh, between those who say they should be there should be an immediate inquiry into the police culture and those saying actually there's no need for it what do you say in because th those cases that you've mentioned there have been inquiries massive inquiries over hacking 
So should the police now have a massive inquiry about a culture that lets such people in and doesn't weed them out? Well, as I say, um, there could be no possible recruit test that can predict uh, what someone is going to do. I mean, um, the exposure to pornography that uh, is so pre prevalent these days. I mean, the BBC feeds soft porn into our homes and the most mm. foul language every week of the, of the year. OK, so, so if, if there were fewer naked bodies on screen and better language on TV, how would that help with, let's say, I mean, just an investigation, let's say, into um, John Warboys, for example, that's another, another case that I, uh, is fairly recent, where, you know, there's been a lot said about the number of victims who say they came forward, but the police didn't take them seriously about that, and that's why it took a lot longer to catch him. Uh, well, yes. Um, you, can, you can come up with all sorts of cases that uh, mm. could have been handled better. But... Um, I mean, you're, one of your panellists suggested, for example, that 50% or more than 50% of the police force should be females. I've never heard such an absurd suggestion. Why is that absurd? Why is that, why, why is it absurd that 50% well, should be female? It, it's, a, it's a physical job. Criminals don't just come along with a touch of the elbow, you know. They, they, they resist arrest, and uh, I've seen and uh, females just thrown about the place because it's not physically strong enough. Okay. I mean, okay. we certainly have a portion of females in the police force, but uh, to have more than 50% is an absurd suggestion. It shows a completely uh, a lack of any okay. knowledge of what's going on in the world. It's, it's really very, very good talking to you. Thank you very much, Ian. Justified to say that you should insist that the people that you work with be double vaccinated. 0345 6060 973 St John's Wood. Michael. It's totally unjustified. What sort of fascist world are we living in? You've got to be vaccinated for a vaccine that doesn't even stop you getting the virus. This is so ridiculous. How on earth can anyone who um, is not vaccinated be a threat to someone who is? And Len Goodman's comment that, 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 that everybody should be vaccinated is just an absolute nonsense. We haven't had any yellow uh, data yet about the side effects. Um, there's no reporting on the news about what's happening in Australia, putting fascist stickers on unvaccinated household doors. I mean, that, that's what it's been on LBC, thank, thankfully. But, and, and you're doing your bit um, um, to, to hopefully get some yellow data re released and some truth. Uh, um, discerned um, um, into this COVID mess. But um, they, they, they can't seem to put the shovel down. They keep digging the hole bigger. The lie becomes more and more hollow. Um, you know, truck drivers, HGV drivers lumped in with tanker drivers. They're two different animals. It's like comparing a greyhound to a horse. A tanker, a tanker driver has to go whoa, through whoa, special whoa, 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 Nelly. Tra training. We're, yeah, we're, we're, not know, we're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about the what vaccine. I'm, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is everything is starting to, pour, to, to, to point to different countries clutching other countries' lies that there's a, a truck driver shortage in the EU, UK, right, uh, and the uh, USA all simultaneously. OK, again, not the issue in this hour, but um, thanks for that confusing uh, missive. And the question is simple. Which human beings do you blame for the unique problems that the United Kingdom is currently facing? David's in Islington. David, what do you reckon? Good morning, James. Hello. Boy, you're a little bit feisty this morning, aren't you? I wasn't planning on it, mate, but you know how it is. You like, you like the blue touch paper, I'd go off like a Catherine wheel. <laughs> um, we've spoken before. Uh, I work in hospitality recruitment. Previous to that, I was in hospitality for 30 years. So I've been in and around it all my adult life. Now... I can talk about hospitality the day is long because I know it. And it may be the exception to what you're talking about. And mm. incidentally, we have spoken before. I did vote for uh, leave. Um, horrified. I just got a message. I just got a message from someone saying, I'm sitting here trying to work out what name rhymes with Brexit. And then, then, the, then the penny finally dropped. How does Steve rhyme with Brexit? And then the penny finally <laughs> dropped. So we get there in the end. No, never mind that. We're not relitigating um, that unless, unless you're still in deep denial. No, no. I mean... It, it, but there's several points I want to make. Yeah. First of all, uh, you, 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 you're pinning a loss of this kind of in a binary way. Um, hospitality, I'll give an example of this. One in four job vacancies pre-COVID, pre-Brexit, one in four job vacancies for a skilled worker was a chef position. Yes. It has always been like that. 
So it well, is. it hasn't, in, in, Again, I, I'm going to do what I did with Steve. I'm going to remind you that although many yeah. sectors persist and exist in a state of permanent shortage, they're never at full capacity. Pre-COVID yeah. and pre-Brexit, you never read about restaurants not being able to open no, because they wouldn't. didn't have the staff. And we are reading no. about that now. So the question is about the unique problems we are currently facing. It's not about what the situation no, was three years you, ago. You can't say, James, that the industry wasn't warm. It's always been like this. There's always been the state of... But the people in charge said there was nothing to worry issues. about. Um, yeah, I beg to differ because I have a business based on it. No, no, no. The, the, the people in charge, it's... when they were warned about what would happen if we cut off the supply of labour, the people in charge said, don't worry, we'll be fine. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to defend Brexit, not by a long chalk. And to be honest, Lord Frost saying he wants to go back and renegotiate the Northern Ireland Protocol... These guys don't get it because they've never really had proper jobs. I sit down... He was the chief deals. executive of the Scotch Whiskey Association, I believe. An association, not an actual business. No. Not an actual business where his livelihood depended on it. He was a, an association of a group of companies that none of them were answerable to him. They didn't have to... He, he was also a fairly adamant Remainer when he was in that role, although it's, it's amazing how the world turns. Yeah. So, I, I, listen, I am being a bit... Uh, insistent today on, on actual yeah. human beings. So you've mentioned Lord Frost. He's not to blame. Yeah, so he can't, this, this is, and this is a fundamental problem yeah, across on. the board. Liz Trust is another one. These people can't negotiate deals. We should have had business people. And, and part of the other problem is that people who voted Remain kind of forget is that David Cameron said, I'll go back and renegotiate no, my position no, no, with the no, EU. No, 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 yes, he no, did. No, yes, no, he did. No. And the yes, EU he did. turned around and said, yeah, we're not interested. No, and the EU that, turned okay. around and said, David, I hate this, because I honestly thought these battles were over. The EU turned around and said, you already have by far the best relationship as a member state and than any other than any other country in the Union. So we can give you a couple of baubles to take back to Britain, but the idea that you're going to be able to have a unique status denied to yeah. all the other members is pie in the sky. And we yeah. only ended up in that position because so of right-wing media brainwashing people like you that it was actually possible, plausible no, or not doable. At all. Yes, mate. So, so, so what, which, what, which what part, could he have come back part? with? They, 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 I hate doing this, mate. Let's not fall out, but I have to ask you the question that I asked yeah. five years ago. What could he have come back with that would have changed your mind? David Cameron? Yeah. He couldn't have come back with anything because... Well, then why bring it up, then? Well, well, for you to negotiate something, you need to have two parties where they can meet... With a, a, a you, you just said that was part of the problem, so I'm saying what could he have come back with? The fact that he came back with nothing was the problem well, for you, so what could he have come yes, back with that so would have removed the problem? Back with any number of things... Go on, then. Which, which, which... Go on, then. ...which leave we're talking about. No, go, listen, go, go on, then. This is what? clearly a popular thing. What? So whether it's freedom, you know, in inverted commas, freedom of movement, because we still have freedom of movement, but, to a degree, mm, mm, mm. I can still go and work in France if I want. Yes. I can still go and work in Germany if I want. So we're talking about I, why people aren't coming here. So what could David Cameron have because, come back with that would have removed the problem you, you, you described? You actually said this yourself the other day. We were talking about hospitality. I'm going to ask you the question again and again and again. Hospitality on the continent is viewed differently to hospitality in the UK. So David Cameron could have come back with a psychological sea change in how we view hospitality in the United well, Kingdom. Come on, David. Come back with, I don't know what he could have come back with. But then why is it a problem that he came back with nothing, then? No the, myth, no, the point was, to a lot of people, was status quo or change. Because they'd been brainwashed by the right-wing media and didn't possibly, know, didn't know how lucky we were. And you're one of them, mate. No, no, not at all. So what could he have come back with, then? Well, I've just explained to you. No, you haven't. Status quo or, or change. So what would change have looked like? And what he, could he, he have come back with? What quo. could he have come back with? I don't know. There you go. I really don't know. Couldn't let, tell you. Let, let, like there you I said go. To you, I'm, I'm not going to defend Brexit. I'm not. You voted for it. Shambles. You voted for it. It's not yeah, been yeah, a shambles. It's it. unfolded I exactly as it was. Ago, five years ago. It's unfolded exactly as it was always going to unfold. No, there were guesstimates. Yes. You could, you could prophesize all you want and turn around and go, yes, you know, this is what's going to happen. Or but you could the, ask the, the best qualified people in the world. Twitter. You could ask the best qualified people in the world what was going to happen and they'd tell you, or you could listen to Digby Jones and you listen to Digby Jones. No, I don't listen to Digby Jones. Who did I've you listen to then? Jones until Who did you listen to? Who did you listen to? <coughs> I went and did my own research. Here we go. 
that, that's what I did. OK, and who I'm wrote, the, who wrote the stuff you researched? No, 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 no. Who wrote the stuff you researched? Who wrote the stuff you researched? Who wrote the stuff you researched? that we rejoin the EU? It doesn't matter what I want. I'm interested in what you no, want. No, because, well... It's who, really when you did your own research. research... Come on, mate. When you did your own research, who were the people that you found most persuasive? I found a consensus of opinion. So I went across Guardian, The Eye... Yeah, so what, 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 what was, what, what, what was, what was the IGA. persuasive points that you researched? What was the stuff that made you go, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm definitely going to vote for well, that. I was... My, my belief was that we could negotiate something. something but you can't would... tell me what. That's why I kept saying, what could he have brought well, back? And you said, I don't yeah, know. We, we, could, we could negotiate a, a decent trade deal. So I can't tell you what it is. I don't know what it looks like. I can't actually put into no, words what it is. I thought we could achieve. We could, we could negotiate achieve. a decent trade deal. We could negotiate... Despite the um, fact they said you know, we couldn't. ...a system that works for everybody. Right. We don't have that. We, do, we just don't have that. Hey. But getting back to... No, we're to out of time now, mate. We're, we're, we're what, out of time. What do, what do Remainers hope to gain? You can't remain. You, you can't remain in something you've left. I think we need yes, to bring no, back... absolutely, but you I, keep banging I, the drum. No, well, I'll, so. tell you, I'll tell you, I told you yesterday. So what, what do you I'll tell you, I told you yesterday. Game, you, liberty of motion. Liberty of motion? Yes, it means that European Union citizens can come and work here. Uh, we won't be able mm -hmm. to go and work there. But it's nothing like freedom of movement because we can't call it freedom of movement because then lots of people who still don't we understand that, anything. James. No, we do we not. Ha James. Well, then where are they all then? They just don't want to come here because <laughs> the problem is cost of living here is expensive, James. Oh, come off it. We're talking about people who live and work no, in Germany, people who live and work in France. Let's not fall out, David. Seriously, mate. I don't, keep, carry on because calling me. To, but to, but we, when you're you ready, can... when you're ready to smell the coffee, I hope there's no, someone... I, I hope, I I hope there's someone here... Brexit, to, but but you are still defending it. You're defending the mythical Brexit. Corner, I've asked you you're what your game And is. I've told you, we need liberty of motion. So people can get visas. Not visas. To come and work not visas. Well, you can give them a visa if you want, but everyone will be eligible for a visa. We'll do it sector by sector. We'll start with the fuel drivers, then we'll do the butchers, then we'll do the veterinarians, yeah. then we'll do the healthcare well, we workers, the then we'll do the social system. care workers, then we'll do the yeah. chefs, then we'll do the waiters, then we'll do the baristas, yeah. then we'll do the doctors, then we'll do the nurses. We'll do it sector by sector and we'll call it visas. By the time it's ended, it's liberty of motion, which is freedom of movement for everybody else except us. And you voted for it. And when you're ready to smell the coffee, I well, hope you can. I hope you can find someone who will brew it for you. you more than you I'll tell you what, in for a penny, in for a pound. We'll go all the way to Saudi Arabia and see if the switchboard is working. Abdul is there in Al Hassa. Abdul, what would you like to say? Hi, James. It's fantastic to talk to you. Yeah, well. I listen to you regularly. I live in Saudi Arabia, and Hassan, I'm just talking to you from Al Hassa in Saudi Arabia. It's a, it's a nice place to live in. I'm British. Um, I live and work here. It's fantastic. It's well, not I, I, like I, what you've just... Well, go on. I, I, I'm, as I say, I, I, I've had the privilege of, of giving an award to... Jamal Sh Sh Khashoggi's partner, and obviously she would disagree very much with your portrayal mm. of the country of where you live. And 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 we're not here to we're not here to to do the job of the tourist board. Just just t tell me your reasons for thinking that there's no real story here, or that 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 you know the money has to come from somewhere, so it might as well come from one of the most oppressive regimes in the history of the world. I guess from a football point of view, uh, I was watching the BBC last night, and I looked. Uh, their fans outside uh, St James Park. It's fantastic for them. The, the club has been run very badly for a long time. The money, as I said, has to come from somewhere. And the Saudi government or the Saudi people has done a very good job by securing this thing to, to look after the club. So I can't see any problem with that. 
Well, I mean, of course you can't, because you don't think there's any problem with Saudi Arabia. So, I, I mean, getting killed for adultery, is that still a thing? Now we're getting into something I don't know... Um, well, you live there. I, put it? <laughs> I live there. I live there. Uh, you, you so, get, women get stoned, right, for, for adultery? I've been here for five years. I've never seen it. I've never heard of a woman who has had that done. Well, I've but never watched Hollyoaks, but I know it's on the telly. It's an Islamic rule, James. Right. Uh, if you steal, you get your hand chopped off. It's right. an Islamic rule. So now, so now you're talking about Islam. You're not talking about Saudi Arabia. Well, no, I am. Well, the whole there's, Islamic there's world... There's lots of Muslims here, as you know. You, you've been here yourself. You don't get your hand chopped off living here, whatever religion you are. They live, they live, in, they live in the UK. They yeah. have to abide okay. by the There's lots of Muslim the countries UK. where you don't get stoned to death for, uh, for adultery. The, Simply because they've chosen not to represent them. <laughs> Come not on. You weren't one. expecting this to happen when you woke up this morning. <laughs> Flippin' heck, Abdul, you've ended up on national radio defending the stoning to death of women for committing adultery. I am not defending it. I'm only saying oh, that... Right. Well, you're not, you're not as unhappy Islamic about world. it as, as you might be. No, great, I'm Great not. place to live, you said. I've been here for five years. It's fantastic. All I would right. love you to come and visit. But I, I wouldn't dare risk it, I'll be honest with you, because I might accidentally blaspheme. What happens to me you if I accidentally have... blaspheme? Is that still a hundred lashes? You don't have to do it. <laughs> As I said, it might happen accidentally. It's coming up to half past. Abdul, mate, thank you for, for playing. Um, and that is the point. I, uh, we can give him a bit of a... A bit of a... What, what's the word? Teasing? I don't know. I feel I should use a stronger word than that. But as I say, why should he be held responsible for the moral uh, decrepitude of the country where he lives? Any more than Newcastle United fans should be held responsible for the moral decrepitude of their new owners. Because if you want to talk about moral decrepitude, I don't think America and the UK have got much of a leg to stand on at the moment. When you look at the, uh, the two men who have been in charge or, 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 or are currently in charge and their personal morality. No, no aspersions being cast that aren't well documented and well evidenced, you know? Whether it is the, the 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 crime that would get you killed <laughs> in uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia has been committed several times by both the former president of the United States of America and the current prime minister of the United Kingdom. That's not an opinion, by the way. That's just counting. And Lee is in Cardiff. Hi, Lee. Oh, hi, hi, Andy. How are you doing? I'm very well. Tell me about you and vaccines. Yeah, so, you know, when COVID first hit and we went into our first lockdown, you know, I was one of the uh, sort of really petrified of it at the time. I was wiping worktops down, handles down, and I spent a small fortune on anti-back, um, you know. But then as time went on, I just started to think that it wasn't kind of what what they were making out to be. And then I watched in the mainstream media, sort of BBC, and I noticed that when they were doing the, the daily death updates, uh, sorry, daily death uh, updates, it, you know, first of all, it was died with COVID. Then after a few weeks, it was um, died with COVID within 20, 20 days of a positive test. Then it changed to uh, 28 days of a positive test for any reason. And, and that then started to make me think, well, actually, this is not what they, what they said it was. And did I need to be petrified? Then you've got... You know the, um, the the stories of people being uh, uh, sort of uh, COVID being put on the death certificates, regardless what happened, and families having to fight to get it taken off. You've got the government, which let's be honest, the government. They've, you know, Matt Hancock was preaching and what have you, and you know he's been caught out uh, for for breaking the rules. Uh, Boris now recently is again, you know, looks like he broke the rules during Christmas time and so on. I think there's huge distrust in the government, and these are the people that are driving the messages. Um, there's never been a balanced approach for me, whereas we locked down, we locked down hard, we spread it, nothing but fear and doom. We didn't talk about people who were surviving COVID through natural immunity. You know, we didn't uh, we didn't look at what the lockdowns were going to do to people. We've never done that. Um, and the other thing is as well, is going back to the lady who's on the show tonight as well, mm. in regards to the effects. You know, the government have got a yellow card scheme and that's never talked about. You can go and find it and, and it's quite alarming some of the stuff that's on there with Bell's palsy, um, you know, blood blood clots and blood, uh, brain brain issues that's, that's on there. And then what people say is, oh, well, that's a small amount of people with regards to the amount of people being vaccinated. But if you're sceptical on the vaccine, vaccines or you're worried about it in any way, that kind of information, mm. which is on the government's own website, is going to frighten you. And, and Helen will come in in a moment. I'm just curious, Liam, I mean, and I think I know the answer to this, but I want to ask you, is there anything now that would persuade you? Not at the moment. In fact, it, it, it's getting worse, if I'm honest, with regards mm. to the media, um, because they just there's, there's still no balanced approach to it. And I think the, man, the vaccine mandate is... is <laughs> 
is going another level again where you where you know I think the gentleman on the, on the show said or and and Javid said you know to get your freedoms back well I'm sorry but our freedoms are our freedoms they were taken away from initially what was to protect everyone we've not protected the NHS because we've now they're overwhelmed with people who, who weren't diagnosed and weren't able to be diagnosed um, Nightingale hospitals were never used because they never had the staff to, to man them um, so you know with vaccine mandates I think I'm sorry, but they're going the wrong way because they're forcing people now who were who were perhaps sceptical and worried into now saying, Well actually, you're threatening me now. You're threatening me with the everyday stuff that I that I wanted to do, you know, that I can't do unless I have these vaccines. So you're actually going down the wrong road and right. and then going after the children as well with it with it and you know, the ages in America, I think it's five to eleven, they're asking now for those to be vaccinated. I just think it's sending out the complete wrong messages. OK, Lee, thank you. Stay right there. Dr Helen Salisbury. I can completely understand, Lee, your feeling about not wanting to be forced into this and, and the lack of trust in the government. And frankly, they've been flip-flopping all over the place, haven't they? That, that um, you should wear masks, no, you shouldn't wear masks, no, it's Freedom Day, oh, look, then cases are going up. It's really not been done very well. I think some of the messages have been wrong. Everyone's been you know, frantically wiping things down when actually what they should have been doing mostly is opening the windows. It has been a mess. I completely agree. Um, but and, and the question about counting counting deaths is a really interesting one as well. Um, at the moment, the headline figure is people who died within 28 days of um, having COVID or having a COVID diagnosis. But of course, actually quite a lot of people um, particularly the younger ones, live a lot longer than that and then they don't appear in the figure even though they eventually do die of COVID. So probably the death certificates are are more reliable than, than that. I think the best figure you can look at is how many more, more people died this year than would do in an average year and that tells you something about the impact of COVID. It's a lot of people, even though you might argue about what you know a few of them, with, with, what was the real cause. There's still undoubtedly lots of people dying from COVID. Um, and the vaccine will not protect you 100%, but it goes a long way towards that. Um, and, you know, I still think that, that, you know, everyone who possibly can should be vaccinated. And yes, yellow card scheme, you mentioned that. So yellow card scheme, if anyone takes any medicine and something bad happens, then a car gets sent in. We never know, we don't know, whether the bad thing that happened was related to that medicine or vaccination. If you get lots which say the same thing, you start making some connections, but you can't tell from just one. So inevitably, you know, if someone has a vaccine and then they break their leg, the vaccine didn't cause them to break their leg. You know, that's a, maybe a facetious, maybe a silly example, but not everything that is on those cards was related to the vaccine. Carl's in Norwich. Carl, what do you reckon? Um, I, I think it's time we started talking about healing and moving forward together as a country, really. We all you, accept you've got to acknowledge that You've got to acknowledge the wounds first, haven't you? Yeah, I think we do, but also you have to acknowledge that in 2016 you can argue the rights and the wrongs of the vote, but we were given the vote and ultimately democracy prevailed. You know, whether you like the result or not. Well, democracy it, prevailed it, in Nazi Germany, mate. Uh, I'm allowed to think oh, that that was on, a... Uh, come on, we're not in Nazi Germany, we have freedom of speech. No, no, the, the phrase democracy prevailed, focusing exclusively yeah. on that as an unalloyed good, is clearly yeah. not true. People voted for things that have not happened, which many of us explained would never happen, but they, in good faith and through no fault of their own, believe that they might. So how do we heal? Well, we heal by hopefully people like yourself, the media generally, accepting that um, you know, it's not perfect. I, I actually don't do that. I, I was fortunate enough to go to hustings that were run by David Cameron and Michael Gove, so I actually got to listen to both sides of the argument. And we all accept that they weren't completely truthful and we all accept there was a degree of arrogance. No, 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 I'm sorry. I appreciate you're still sort of in, 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 in the third state of, of grief, but... No, I'm not in grief, actually. Double, I don't, I don't, double I don't the regret, negative like, impact yeah. of the pandemic. It's not, it's not going perfectly. According to the sums, the people that do the sums that the entire budget is built on, the long-term negative impact is going to be twice as bad as the worst pandemic the world has seen in living memory. So it's not, oh, some of this went well and some of it went badly. If you want to heal, mate, you've got to start telling the truth. I agree completely. So I, on a scale I mean, of one to ten, how badly is it going compared to how well you thought it would go when you voted for it? 
Uh, well, to be honest, I thought it would be like a super tanker. You turn the wheel and it would take five to, five to eight years to turn the corner to, 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 to go on a new... So how do you feel about the fact that it's sinking? I don't think it's sinking. I, so I you're still in denial. I, I think, how can we heal I, if you're still in denial? I, I think you're making perceptions. Uh, no, 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 I'm going by the OBR forecast judgment. that the entire budget is built on. I've explained this at some length already today, Carl. I, I listen. I, yeah. I also work in finance. So I, I, I think you have to give it an opportunity to work. Yes, they've said it's been given an opportunity to work and the long-term negative impact will be twice as bad as COVID. I, I think, well, I'm t the problem is how many history will do, actually, won't it? So yes. five years' time... So you're, so you're thinking, well, don't pay too much attention to what the OBR is saying, in which case, why do we have a budget built upon the OBR? In, indeed, but e equally... No, what do you mean, indeed? Say, it's a question. Why do we have a budget built upon OBR forecasts if there's no point trusting OBR forecasts, Carl? Because some of the budget is smoke and mirrors, as we all oh, know. Oh, OK, right, it, right. It, it, right. It, but your, vote, but your vote for Brexit was clear-eyed and clever. I never said it was... I, I, I was given a choice. So, given, final, I, let's I, go I, back I, to the question of healing, then. Well, what does healing look like while people like you are still talking twaddle? Well, th th this is healing coming over the radio, isn't it? You're saying I'm talking twaddle, but I respect your view. You should respect my I view. I don't respect your view because it's been proved wrong. You thought Brexit would improve my country. It's making everything worse. What's to respect in that, Carl? But, but equally, I'm still being polite to you, not the other way around. But you you, you have, have very that. little choice but to be polite. Uh, tell me what I should respect about the view that you had that Brexit would improve my country and my life. You accept that we were given... No, no, the respect. What should I respect about that view? That, I, that, that you should respect that I went into a booth and followed my democratic right to vote. What should I respect about your view that my life and my country would be improved? Look, at the time of the vote... Well, the problem is we're going back over all ground, don't we? No, no we're, we're not. This is a brand new question. Back, I've never back, spoken back, to you. Back, what back. should I respect about your view that my country and my life would be improved? Because I'd love to heal. So what should I respect about that view? That, given the time and given the information we were provided, and the key was we were... No, I had the same it. information as you, mate, and I knew this was going to happen, so that doesn't fly. What should I respect about your view that my country and my life and my children's future would be improved by the thing you voted for? OK, well, first and foremost, you've obviously had the, the brilliance of foresight that the rest of us... Didn't. No, mate, I just, uh, I just had my eyes open. What should I respect well, about your view that this would be good for me, for my country, my future and my children? Just give me okay. one thing I should respect about that view, Carl. Well, as you said, we're going over old ground, aren't we? That no, no, we, we can't would... go over old ground until we've been on it once. You haven't given me one thing that I should respect, and I'm going to give you one more go. OK, one more go. You should, res you should respect that I was given a democratic vote, and I followed That's that not your view. Vote. The view that you had, that my country would be improved, that my life would be enhanced, that the economy would be benefiting okay. and my children's future would be better, that was your view. You want me to respect it. I'm happy to if you give me one tiny scintilla of a reason I why I should. OK. My, my view at the time, in the short term, I know we'd go through some short-term pain, which we're currently doing. No, we're, believe... we're going through double the negative impact of COVID for the rest of our lives. So what should I respect but, about but, your view? But, but, but COVID is a separate issue to... COVID. What should I respect about your view, Carl? Give me one thing no. that I should respect about your view that has been proved horribly and spectacularly wrong. That I was prepared to take a long-term view on the outcome of this country. Yes, so have the OBR, mate. 4% 4, 4 damage to, to GDP. That's the OBR's long-term view. I'm interested in your view that you demand I respect. I want one reason why I should respect it. Uh, the, the very fact that we're on the radio having this conversation, that we can uh, listen to each other and we, we, may, we may finish this conversation. No, that's three. got nothing to do with the view you had in 2016. So just, just give me one reason to respect it, because I would genuinely love to. I would find it helpful and healing. OK. Would you like to know why I voted out? No, I want to know what it was about your view that my life would get better, my country would be improved and Brexit would be good for Britain that I should today respect. OK. That actually, we have a we have our own sovereign parliament. There we, we go. Oh, no, you sovereign. got me there. That's me done. Sovereignty. Alexander's in Liverpool tonight. Alexander. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you, do you think um, do you think that uh, France and Germany want uh, Brexit to be a great success? Uh, depends, doesn't it? I mean, what happens if? Brexit is uh, a great success, which I believe it will be, which I believe it is. Already? What's, what's going to happen? 
in what uh, ways other is countries it, in, in the what, EU, EU yeah. will leave as well, won't they? In what way is it, is, it, is it a success already? Sorry? In what way is Brexit a success already? Well, well I, 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 it's a question. Yes. Is it? Is it well, that's what, well, you said it. But, you, you just said, Alexander, no, that you no, no, think, thought no, it was already my point. Do you think that Germany and France want Britain to succeed with Brexit? I don't think they want a basket case on their doorstep, no. Oh, oh, oh right. So you're on their side, aren't you? No, I'm just seeing it from objectively from the interests of other nations no, they, who are no, geographically no, no, close. No, no. That they if don't want a basket case of a country on the other side. If we're successful... Other countries like Greece, Spain, or whatever, they'll also want to leave, won't they? And that will be the end of the EU. Well, but, Alexander, you said that you thought that Brexit had been a success already, and I'm just asking for examples. No, no, no. I'm asking you the question. If it's a success... Yes. Uh, uh, what will happen? Other countries will leave the quite EU. Quite possibly. Yeah, and, and Poland's, you know, there's stuff happening in Poland and what have you. Yeah, quite, quite possibly, you're right. Quite possibly there yeah. will be... My, uh, other I, may nations be, might... I, I may be right. And I may also be right that, that, um, that this committee that's been formed uh, to write this report are a bunch of Ramonas. Oh, that's all, just so. like you. Oh, my that's God. all they are. They're losers. <laughs> well, the cross-party group of MPs that wrote the report on COVID. Yeah, a lo bunch of losers, yeah. Yeah. Alexander, when you said that you think Brexit has already been showing signs of success, can you point me to an example? I, I didn't quite hear that, sorry. Um, so when you said on the radio just now that you thought Brexit had already shown signs of success, can you point to an example? No, I didn't really say that. You did say that, sir. No. You, oh, 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 you did. Oh, I think, personally, I, I think it's, it's a great best thing since uh, sliced bread, yeah. And can you point to an example Boris, of where it has displayed Boris, a success? John, Boris Johnson, by the way. Is the best prime minister we've had for a long, long time. Sir, that's, a, uh, as per, uh, that's a, an opinion that you hold. Indeed. What what is it about Brexit that has been a success of late? No, you, I'm sorry, that's not. <laughs> you, what do you want me to do? I'm I, not I'd a like you just try and answer the question uh, just, honestly, as honestly as you can. W what, what has been successful thus far since the UK has left the European Union because of Brexit? It, well, it, it, what, what it's done, apart from anything else, Tom, what it's done, it's shown up this, the appalling, the appalling weakness of the EU, of France and Germany. In what regard? They don't like it. To, to quote Dad's army, they don't, they don't like it up them. But in what way we, have they... In what, we, way, in what we weakness broke, have we, we displayed away, in them? We're free as a bird now. Mm. But in we what, can do what we like. But in what way have we shown up their weaknesses? Well, look at them. They're whingers. We, we, we beat them in... We, we rescued them, if you like, in two world wars. They can't bear our guts, can wow, they? we're hitting all the, all the real notes here. What? I, so you... So the weaknesses... I'm, serious, I'm perfectly serious. The weaknesses, that, mm, the weaknesses that we've shown up because of leaving in France and Germany recently have, has been... What? Look, ask yourself the question again. OK, do well, I'll ask think, it to you. Do you the think weaknesses they, that you've said you, that we've you shown in France and Germany... ...want us to succeed? They don't, and they're trying to torpedo the whole thing, okay. just like you are. You're trying to torpedo Boris Johnson. <laughs> well, I don't know why you don't go and live in Europe, for goodness sake. Oh, my word, Alex. You're letting this country down in a shock, most shocking way. Well, I, find, I, I, I take slight you're umbrage. absolutely though. letting this country down. It's I, almost treasonable, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just, all you are is a car salesman. Because you're, you work for a company, LBC, that sells cars. Well, it's actually, I, I, I have to say, I take okay. slight, I, I, I take I, slight I umbrage with that. Bye -bye. I, take, I take slight umbrage with that because, um, for... Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Man, that is, that is one of the more wild calls on, that I've taken on about Brexit. That takes me back. Oh, that... That rolls back the years, doesn't it, hearing a call like that? <laughs> that is, that is fun. What, I, I mean, for better or for worse, largely for worse, um, as someone who voted Remain, I did try. I mean, I did literally work for a government that attempted to implement Brexit. I mean, it wasn't successful. But I find it hard to think that that's 
I <laughs> just... Wow, man. A minister has repeatedly refused to apologise for the government's handling of the coronavirus pandemic after a highly critical report by MPs said thousands of lives were lost because of mistakes made by the government and its scientific advisers. The report calls the decision to delay lockdown in early March 2020 one of the most important public health failures the country has ever experienced. It highlights a list of failures in social care, including a lack of staffing, testing and access to PPE, as well as the rapid discharge of patients from hospitals into care homes, which led to thousands of avoidable deaths. It is also critical of the government's initial pursuit of a herd immunity strategy and points to a culture of groupthink amongst scientists and ministers, which meant early opportunities to delay the spread of COVID were missed. And it finds that test and trace ultimately failed. But speaking on Sky News this morning, Cabinet Minister Stephen Barclay repeatedly refused to apologise for the government's handling of the crisis. Of course, if there are lessons to learn, we're keen to do so. Keen to start with an apology, though, I would have thought. Uh, well, no, we followed the scientific advice. We protected, so no apology? We followed the scientific advice. We protected the NHS. 20,000 lives needlessly lost because you didn't lock down a week earlier and you don't want to apologise. Well, the issue of the timing of the lockdown was based on the evidence and the scientific advice at the time. I don't understand why you don't want to apologise. Well, there are lessons to learn, but the point is that we took decisions based on the science. Yeah, but you're representing the government this morning and there were 20,000 unnecessary deaths in the United Kingdom, many of them elderly people, and you don't want to apologise. Well, what I'm saying, Kay, is did we take decisions based on the scientific evidence we were protected? Why did we say save I'm, lives? We're sorry. Did we save lives through deploying the vaccine at pace far quicker uh, than many comparable countries? Making a dramatic return to the programme after ringing us up again, despite having said that he's got nothing more to say. Alexander's in Liverpool. Alexander, hi. Oh, oh Tom, thank you. Welcome yes. back. Uh-huh. What would you uh, like to say? Well, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to express an overview here. So, uh, the, the question, sorry, to, to remind listeners, the question was that based on you having said that there have been uh, uh, wins from Brexit though, thus far and Brexit was displaying successful attributes right now, my question to you was which? You said just, something about me being treasonous and then hung up. And so your oh, answer now is... <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that sounds a bit rude, does it? Um, well, uh, I think but, it's probably but, quite mean, rude. You know, know, yeah. can't, can't you support your country a bit? I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. What, what, do you, what do you mean? Well, I support this country in a variety of different ways. In fact, I would, I, would, I would argue, Alexander, that I personally have done more to try and make Brexit happen than you have. And I didn't well, vote for uh, how it. Can you, how can you possibly know that? Well, I, that's my argument. To tell me I'm wrong. Prove, show me I'm wrong. Well, I don't know what you've done. Well, I uh, worked for the government to try and make what? Brexit happen for a period of time. You did what? 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 Sorry. I'm having trouble hearing you. you. You did what? I worked for the government to try and make Brexit happen. You did? Yes. That's a fact, is it? Yes, it is, yes. For better or for worse. So, so, you, yeah, well, so you wanted Brexit to work? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, argued, well, good. I argued, argued for years passionately for Brexit to happen, even though I didn't vote for it, because the majority did vote for it. Why, why on, how could you want it to happen and then not vote for it? Because the majority voted for it, we had a we had a we had a referendum. No, no, sorry. You say you worked for Brexit. No, but I, you didn't. But you no. didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for Brexit. I worked for the government who were trying to implement Brexit. Well, now Brexit that, has been implemented in the fashion in which I didn't think it should be implemented, and I don't really like compute, the way it's been implemented. Tom, it doesn't compute. Why? Well, you can, I mean, Do you have so to be you, pure of thought? I, 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 I wanted Brexit, and I voted for it. Yeah. And so, and so did the majority of other right-thinking people. OK. Well, I didn't vote for Brexit, but once Brexit was... Well, there was, we are. Well, it was your mistake. But, once but never Brexit, mind. But once Brexit was voted for, I thought, well, this is democracy in action, so Brexit ought to happen, and then I spent some part of my life working for a government to try and make Brexit happen. Mm hmm What did yeah, you do? me too. What did you do? Oh, I, I, I've been in correspondence with the, the Prime Minister and, and so on. You've, no, you've, which I, you've, I can't go into, of course. You've, you've spoken to the Prime Minister? I said correspondence. And you've had a letters back? Yes. 
from the Prime Minister to you. Yes, but I can't talk about that, can I? Why not? But you asked me what I've done. I'm, t I'm telling you. You've received correspondence from the Prime Minister? Yes. That sounds fantastic. What were you well, promised? Well, it's not fantastic. I, I simply am supporting him. And, and, you, and, and you've received a letter back of thanks saying thank you for your Mo support? I most certainly did, yep. And one, another one from the Queen, I, I, I must say. But uh, there we are. But this is private business. You shouldn't be... Of course, of course. Don't probe, please, on this. I, 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 I will probe no further on what missives you're exchanging with both uh, let me just, the Prime Minister just, and I, Her I, Majesty I, It's the very Queen. good of you to come back to me when I've already, I've already had a, an innings. Well, you rang in, I'm afraid. So uh, tell, me, tell me what it is that you, would, you wanted to say. I rang again. Yes. Tom, I rang again yes. to talk about the bigger issue that Sir. we all face in the world. Sir. Because I'm interested in the big picture. Yes. And the big picture is this world's in trouble. And we'd better start talking about climate change and all that while we still have time. OK. What would you like to say? What, what would you like to say about climate change? Uh, oh, are you still there? I, yes, yep. I say we had better concentrate on these big questions, well, that big question, really, um, while we have time. And also, <clears throat> and also, <clears throat> um, one, of, one of the interesting things to me is I'm a, a very earnest listener to your program. Thank you. I, I mean, to LBC. Thank you. One fascinating thing is that the, the, all you presenters, you have certain things in common, uh, certain things. Hmm. Uh, two of the things, two of the things that you have in common, are that you're, um, are that you're um, atheists and Ramonas, and, so, and a lot of you are gay. Uh, three, <laughs> three characteristics. No, you, no, by your own admission, you, you you tell us, you tell us, or they tell us. Uh, Alexander, yes. I, I, you're right. I work with. People at this radio station who are gay, yes. I work with people yeah. at this well, radio station they, they who don't so. have a faith. I, and I work I with people know. at this they radio station me. who voted to leave. But I also work with people at this radio station who voted to leave and are gay. Mm -hmm. And what does that? What do you think about that? Huh? I'm, I'm just saying what I what I hear on LBC. Right. I hear, I hear most presenters being uh, Ramonas and atheists, and, and a lot of them also gay. That's all. I hear what I hear. And when, that, and when, what do you make of that? I, I, I'm honestly, I'm absolutely stumped by it. I mean, I, don't, I just don't see of what. It's only an, it's only an observation. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's an observation without a point. I mean, I just, uh, yes, you're right. There are people who work here who are gay, and who there are people who work and here all, who voted for And you all have, look, I'm talking about climate change as being well, the big you? issue. <laughs> were and you? you? And you're all, you're all car salesmen, aren't you? Because you're, the company you work for is a car salesman. I mean, get real. Get real. This, our, our country needs... Look, our country's a great country. We've, we've led the way in so many things in our history. Right up until the, uh, the current um, uh, uh, vaccination program. Where is the game? Fantastic. Now then, can we have some more support, please, for our country, from you and all your colleagues... And, and my gay colleagues? Everybody. Yeah. Absolutely everybody. I have no issue with gay, black, brown, stupid, whatever. But we must have, we must have a concerted effort now while we have time. That's all I, I am trying to say. Petty politics. It's, 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 it's left the room, Tom. Petty politics has left the room. So let's not, get, let's not be so boring. Let's get interesting. You've got these little people like uh, Greta Thunberg and all the other people gluing themselves to Rose and all that. Man, wrong answer to the right problem. Can we try and address the problem correctly? Yes. But, Alexander, the question I must ask, uh, ask you before I let you go... Yeah. ..is this. Do you want a second-hand Ford Mondeo? I, I, hang on. Do I want what? 
Never mind. Let's talk to Farah in Golders Green. Hello, Farah. Hi, good afternoon, Sheila. What did you want to say, Farah? Um, I'm just going to explain something to you. Um, uh, and uh, um, uh, please, if, 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 if I go too far, let me know so I can uh, go back. Um, uh, Northern Ireland, uh, the Ireland had an agreement uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, the, the Good Friday Agreement, okay? And they wanted to join uh, the European community, okay? Uh, they didn't discuss what happens, uh, and both uh, UK and Ireland, they knew that they're gonna, one of the countries might want to leave, and one of the 28 countries might want to leave, and what the situation is going to be after they leave or uh, after they leave the European community. So Ireland joined the European community without discussing the Good, um, uh, Good Friday Agreement with the UK, and they joined it, and they didn't ask the UK, well, if you want to leave, even though they knew that the, 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 the protocol is that if the uh, UK might want to leave the uh, European community, it was Ireland's fault not to discuss <laughs> that before they uh, joined but, but the Farah, European community. But Farah, 20 yes. years before Brexit, 20 years before Brexit, I, mm -hmm. don't, think, I don't think it was an active um, matter in British politics, was it, that no, we, no, that it we would leave I'm the sorry. EU? I'm sorry, I disagree with you. you. When you make a contract, when you make a contract with somebody, or you you're entering to, in another contract with somebody else, if it affects the other two parties, the parties that like um, the UK and Ireland, the Ireland should have come before they go to Europe and say, "Hold on, we're going to join the uh, join the Europeans," and then. If uh, uh, the, the, there is one problem, and the problem is a Good Friday Agreement, what's going to happen to this if UK leaves? I've been screaming this three years uh, uh, at, at the LBC as the radio. But isn't this partly why so many other signatories existed on that on that agreement to secure well, it, to secure the, the, the peace? You're, you're directing you're, you're directing the conversation the other way. The bottom line is, uh, Ireland did not discuss leaving the uh, UK, leaving uh, did, the, did, the did, European community. But neither did Farah, neither did the yeah. UK with Ireland no, in those not, negotiations it, for the Good Friday Agreement. Not, why, is it only, not, why is it only Ireland's omission, in your view? Yeah, because UK is leaving. UK is leaving. No, 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 I'm talking about 20... A, uh, stop yeah. shouting. I'm talking about I'm 20... I'm not shouting. I'm you really are sorry. A bit. Think, I'm talking I'm about really 20 bad years bad. before. I'm talking about 20 years before in the lead-up to the Good Friday Agreement being signed actual brexit on bear in mind tony blair is the prime minister at this point actual brexit leaving the Euro european union was not on their agenda for a second right so th with that in mind to say that the eventuality of one or other side leaving the european union wasn't discussed in relation to the agreement that was being written for the good friday agreement isn't that if if indeed that's true i don't know whether that is true or not but isn't, it isn't, be. But isn't that an omission on both sides, not just the Irish it, it, side? It should have, no, um, it, it should have been because it should have been. But you've been, decided, A, it, it wasn't, it, I don't know whether that's true, and B, if it wasn't, that was Ireland's fault. It, Why? But, but, but the point is, it's, it's UK that is leaving this marriage. And the condition of leaving this marriage should have been discussed. Uh, I mean, uh, Ireland is not leaving. What happens if Ireland left? Would the UK would say, oh, no, no, you can't do that because the good, uh, uh, you know, um, a Good Friday Agreement is, got, you know, it's not going to be but, effective anymore but, and this and the other? But, it's Farah, not, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I don't, as things stand at the moment, I don't know the Good Friday Agreement in sufficient detail to say for sure that this eventuality wasn't addressed. But if it, if it was or it wasn't, it certainly is something that would have to be addressed by both sides during the negotiations of the Good Friday Agreement. Am I right? It's, it's, no. Why? I'm, why I'm we, sorry, why, why was sorry. it... Well, hang on. No, I'm sorry. Why was it only Ireland's responsibility to raise the possibility of one or other side leading the, leaving the European Union 20 years before we actually talked about it officially and, as in with a referendum, and before... Uh, 20 years before... Um, Brexit even happened. 
You're repeating yourself. You see, you ask me a question, let me, uh, let me answer it. It has not been discussed. That's why these problems are occurring. It had been, if it had been discussed, there would have been way in, you know, in that, those discussions, uh, an agreement within an agreement that if one of the countries left, if they would have done this and the other. So it's clear uh, that it, there ha- it hasn't been discussed. And, you know, when, when, when Britain is leaving, but, the other party cannot scream, say, foul. But, no, but, no, you didn't discuss it. All, all right, but, but what I still don't understand from you is why you think the onus was only on Ireland to have a conversation with Britain about Britain's possible departure from the European Union. Uh, is, your, answer, your answer, I'm going to answer your question. Your answer is that um, it is... It is, um, I'm asking for if, your if answer. I, if I, okay, my your uh, the answer your to your question. Uh, I mean, please don't be pedanting. I, be, I have a very little time. You have the mic, and uh, you know I can't. Uh, I don't have all day to say this. But <laughs> if, if Ireland was leaving, I don't think uh, Great Britain or UK would have made such a fuss. I don't think so, and you don't know that either. I, I, so Ireland made a fuss. Is that is that what you're saying? But uh, Ireland is, uh, well, the European community is making a fuss, uh, and Ireland is included in that because the agreement is with Ireland. But uh, but Ireland joined the EU long before the Good Friday Agreement was negotiated. But then it it, it should have it should have been, you know, uh, even more reason that it should have been discussed with by, by both sides. As I said, if uh, Ireland is not leaving, UK is leaving, and Ireland is making the fuss. We don't know if Ireland was leaving, uh, you, would would UK make the, make the same fuss? Well, who, that's who, my point. All right. You know, well, whoever you, you know, you're directing the uh, conversation. Farrah, I'm not. To Farrah, to place. you're very controlling yeah. about how a conversation no, should I go. I am really the sorry. Other, the other side <laughs> of the conversation <laughs> gets to respond the way they wish to. That's all I'm saying. And and you, you're failing to answer any of my questions. What I'm asking. I've answered every one of your questions. No, you've kept. Please don't put that in my mind. No, 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 you've kept talking, but that's not the same as answering my questions. You, oh, you're still true. using okay. your voice and making some noises, but you're not answering my questions, because. The reality of the Good Friday Agreement is that even if Ireland had decided to leave the EU and not Britain deciding to leave the EU, even if that had been the case, the same problem about the border would have existed and needed to be addressed, wouldn't it? Um, I agree with you there, yes. Okay, great. So that means that any discussion that takes place about that border issue has to involve both lead signatories to the Good Friday Agreement, the UK and Ireland. Do we agree I, on that? I, I'm, no, no, I don't agree so with that. So it is Ireland's, because, you think it's Ireland's special responsibility? Because, the, because because we don't know that, first of all. Second of all, don't know what? You know, the great, don't know great what? Britain, what don't UK, we know? What don't we know? Uh, we don't, we have, uh, you... Um, Ireland hasn't left the European community and we don't know if UK would have made such a huge fuss about the border. <laughs> well, it's not about it. It's not about the making yeah. of... I, I'm going to leave it because we are now going around in circles, but it's not about making... And It's interesting how you characterise Ireland, Farah. That's what I would say. It's not about Ireland making a fuss and Britain maybe not making a fuss. The fuss is in the detail, Farah. The fuss is in... The border problems and the fuss is in the Northern Ireland Protocol now and both sides have to talk about it. Both sides have to talk about it. The onus isn't on Ireland not to make a fuss. This is a fascinating approach. <laughs> oh my God, don't know what to say about that really. It's- Sean is in Southwark. Hi Sean, how are you? Hello, you alright? I'm fine. Why did you vote leave? Just did. Can't even remember, but... Um... I think everything they're saying about is HGV shortages, uh, Brexit's affecting everything, everything's on the downfall. It, it, it's not. It's not. I mean, there's just as many lorries queuing to try and go over the Dartford Crossing as there was one, two, three years ago. You're uh, saying, are you the saying there's, there's not a problem? Pardon? Are you saying there aren't problems? Are you saying Brexit has nothing to do no, with it? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, yeah, there's, there's no problems. This is all just... I just feel like it's all made up. I mean... Ah, well, it's not, Sean, sadly.
If there's one thing that graphically illustrates America's battle with global warming, surely it's this. Lake Mead in Nevada, the biggest reservoir in the United States, feeding more than 25 million people. But look at that white line round the edge. It hasn't been painted in. It's where the water used to be, now dried up by drought and climate change. Now, the climate deniers would have you believe that the devastating heat here out west is the result of natural fluctuations, but that white line behind me does not lie. Lake Mead has dropped nearly 150 feet since the year 2000, and for the first time ever, they've had to declare an official water shortage as the combination of searing heat and drought has taken its toll. But what happens in Lake Mead doesn't stay in Lake Mead. Just down the road in the fastest warming city in the country, Las Vegas relies on water to power its round-the-clock consumer culture. But climate certainly isn't top in the minds of the millions who flock here every year. Are you worried about global warming? No. I don't think climate change affects anything. It's how Mother Nature just brings climate to us. The hurricanes are much worse. There's got to be some reason. Do you believe in climate change? No. Why not? Bullshit. What do you mean, Elvis? Climate goes up and down for centuries and millennia. There's no such thing as climate change. America is at a critical juncture. The majority, like President Biden, believe not to act on climate is gambling with our future. But some seem happy to spin the wheel and push a very different agenda. The whole notion that we are facing a climate crisis is a delusion. The voice of the Heartland Institute, a group of climate change deniers hosting a conference here in Sin City. A complete and accurate representation. In an era of pandemic and lockdowns where misinformation has sown division, the language of COVID-19 is increasingly being used to spread fear around climate change. They know they have problems. In they one session, we witnessed attendees trying to discredit the work of the International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. They know they're lying. They're assuming what they're supposed to be proving. Where were the climate attribution studies for the 17-year hurricane drought? Last question. And when you're talking about IPCC reports, you know, they're not signed off by a couple of people. It's hundreds of scientists in the world, and the wording for those reports is agreed by almost every country in the world. Granted, you don't all agree with that, but if you don't, how do you account for the increasing severity of forest fires, of droughts, of floods that we're seeing in the world? You're all having a good laugh, but how do you account well, for these things? Uh, you need to be very precise in what you are alleging but they're not keen on an alternative view as i quickly discovered you can't measure what's happening in global warming and what happened this year that's totally fake science what's wrong with more warming so jenny who are these guys then the heartland institute and are they having any significant impact what's happened with the pandemic is that there is a very real personal experience that has been shared by millions of people globally that can now be weaponized and capitalized upon to really engender a huge amount of, of outrage and grievance and fear had, uh, and what institutions like the heartland institute have been doing for years is to provide that sense of academic rigor who can then go on to mainstream outlets like Fox News and reach an audience with you know exponentially more reach than they ever would have been able to achieve with their own social media footprints. Where they want to put the elites in charge. And Personified we... by this man, Mark Murano, a self-styled environmental journalist and regular conservative media pundit who was busy scaremongering when we caught up with him. Attention, but I don't hear anybody saying well, then you're not categorically I can, I can... that we need climate lockdowns. And that is something that you are saying categorically. Uh, the but phrase no one has climate said that. lockdowns came from a warning from the Gates Fund. You have co opted it. I have not co opted it. I've heard them talk about build back better. I've heard them say the phrase great the reset. Build back better Hold on. is about funding. Do you deny what the World Economic Forum uh, had said in June of 2020? This is a great opportunity to reset capitalism. COVID is an opportunity for us. The reason that they're saying to reset capitalism 
is because of because what they've they been to do see. That all along. But they're using COVID as an example but to say, let's now see. use climate to do the same things that we did with COVID. The climate crisis. Jenny King's the organization, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, has studied the rise of climate disinformation and in a report shared with Channel 4 News, reveals the efforts made to push one phrase in particular, climate lockdown, into mainstream discourse. So we've been hearing here about COVID lockdowns soon to become climate lockdowns. What does that mean? Climate lockdown is a new conspiracy that we're seeing in the anti-climate space that explicitly uses the language of the pandemic and of COVID-19 to fearmonger about a potential future of green tyranny where governments are stripping people of their individual freedoms under the excuse of combating climate change. And so the misinformation flows. But the effects of a warming planet are clear and intensifying, even as many seek to muddy the waters. Lorraine in Brentwood, hello, hi. Hi, hi, Sheila. Um, I think the COVID cat has been let out the bag now. I don't think anybody really realistically thinks it's gone away. We, we, we they now do, have to learn they do, to... Lorraine, they do. People do. Do they really? Yeah. Well, yeah. they I, love I, I, they I, love to tweet me and tell me it's gone away. Well, as, personally, I think we all realise COVID is now here to stay, and we have to learn to live with COVID. Yeah. What I would be interested in, Sheila, is with regard to the death rates going up and the number of hospitalisations going up, is how many of those people have not been vaccinated, and therefore, why should we all have to change our lives? because they've decided that they don't want to get the vaccination. So because they don't want to be vaccinated, I have to ha now change the way I live my life. And which, and I, which and change do you object to most or at all? Well, pretty much everything, if I'm absolutely honest, Sheila. I want to be able to go back to the way my life was before mm -hmm. and not wear masks and be able to socialise and not have the fear of being locked down again. Um, but let's just talk about what you can do now, Lorraine, because um, we'll come back to masks in a minute. The, pr there's pretty much nothing you can't do now, isn't there? You can do exactly. everything now. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so, totally. So I'm, so I'm tell happy that we can, can do everything I am, again. I am. I'm happy. But I'm, well, what, I'm, what I'm not happy about is uh, uh, figures that, that we were reminded of by my guest at the beginning of the programme. Uh, 10,000 people have died of this disease uh, since July the 19th, uh, yep. we've got the, we've got uh, highest cases in Europe and growing of both cases, hospitalizations and deaths. That's before the winter, the autumn and winter stress has even kicked in. Um, we've got winter viruses more generally wrapped up in the problem of COVID as well. So it's hard to distinguish between the two in terms of what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Should we mix? Should we not mix? I, what I don't understand, and this is directed at you specifically, because this is the, yeah. the best way I think we work it out. I don't understand why in a situation where you could get an illness that could either harm or kill you or harm or kill a person you come into contact with, with and by the way, Lorraine, that's likely to be family rather than a stranger, why yeah. you wouldn't be interested in taking some mitigating uh, measures in your life. Not even, I don't think they're even big ones, are they? A mask, a mask when you no, walk into Sheila, a shop? What's the problem? Sheila, I, I abided by all the rules. So did I. I the, Lorraine, Lorraine, and Lor I was very careful. Lorraine, I don't want to know what you did. I want to know why you're no longer prepared to do any of it. Because I'd like the true facts and figures, not just the figures they want to tell us. Okay, right. Right, she doesn't believe anything. Thanks, Lorraine. Uh, my husband went to an open afternoon at school to see our nine-year-old's work. Tiny classroom, 30 kids coughing and spluttering, plus parents and siblings of said kids. He was the only parent wearing a mask. Now, prisoners could be part of the solution to the recent lorry driver shortage, according to the Justice Secretary. Go on. A radical plan was unveiled today where serving inmates will be recruited to drive trucks. Yeah, go on. It's seen as offering a, oh. as a second chance, but there are doubts. So Wait for it. Just how much it will actually help is our consumer editor, Chris Choi. Wait for it. Government Justice Secretary, driven by a prisoner. <laughs> Dominic Raab today highlighting a scheme where convicts are helping with the HGV crisis. 
Here we go. The wheel was Dean. He's on day release from jail working in haulage. His offence was importing drugs involving a lorry. <laughs> I've wronged. Now let me. <laughs> let me Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Harpenden. Hello, Brenda. Hi, Nick. Brenda. How are you? Good, thanks. I've got actually three points. Firstly, I. I just feel there's something much more sinister about all of this. The fact that um, we've had the two vaccines. I have. I took a long time to seriously think that I, you know, need. Well, do I need to get them? Don't I? So I did. But then I was told I had with the Pfizer, I had 98 percent e efficacy, and that has gradually dropped and dropped and dropped to I think it's about I don't know what 76 percent now. And then we're told we've got to have a booster. So. Whenever did we have a flu a flu jab that every six months you had to have another jab? We have it once a year. So yeah, I but think we have it once a year, surely, to get us through flu season. I mean, people don't really catch the flu in the summer. No, but why have we got to have a booster now? And then who knows? This is what I think. In another six months, we could have. They say you've got to have another booster. Hmm. I've I've heard. The immune, well, I heard a, a mum ring up about her son. He was at Nottingham University. He had an immu he had immunosuppressant issues, mm -hmm. so he'd had the two vaccines. Now with this booster, I, I've rung up to decline mine. I was told you don't ring one one nine; you ring your GP. And I said, well, why have you sent me a text to tell me to ring you? They didn't tell me. And I've heard more people saying they're ringing up and they're saying you're not eligible. It turns out the only eligible people at the moment are these immunos immunosuppressants mm, who've that's, had two that's, vaccines. That's not what and I'm... Then they get, well, that's not, yeah, what, that's not my they, understanding. Um, well, that's what this is what this mother okay. rang up on Friday. So he's had the two vaccines. He's had... He needs this one that he's eligible for. Yeah. Then he'll have the booster. Right. And then he'll have the flu jab. Five injections, no thank you. But Brenda, if no uh, way. if you haven't had any negative consequences from the vaccine so far, what's the problem with having a booster? I don't want a booster. But why I not? Because I, I believe my immune system is strong enough and I look, I'm 82. Hmm. I've never had a flu jab. I'm very fit. I take good vitamins. I eat well. Yeah, but Brenda, I do not need Brenda, another ho booster. Yeah, the hospitals are full of people whose uh, lifestyles uh, correspond exactly to what you just said. Well, I believe. I believe. You see, I think the fit, what is so clever about this, they're saying you've got to have the vaccine to protect others. Yeah. When we were kids and had polio, um, TB, uh, diphtheria, we weren't told you've got to have this to protect other people. Well, no, that was it because was it was... To yeah, well, of course, yeah, but the, the suggestion that people in working in the NHS should have these vaccines is uh, to protect uh, the patients that they're treating. Yeah, it, would, but... it would have, the, uh, of course, the, the other effect of protecting the people who got the vaccines themselves. But don't these people, the nurses and the social care who don't want to have the vaccine, and actually, if if Sajid Javid's going to mandate this, he's going to actually put the social care and the NHS on its knees. There will be no carers to look after the elderly people only who if, will then die. Well, only because if, they won't be there to give, to, there won't be any carers there. Well, only if and those... they're bringing and they're bringing the private sector to take over. This is what they oh, want the, okay. to do. Okay, so this is the sinister yeah. part of what you were describing. Yeah, that's, this is yeah. Right. Okay. That, that's what I think. All that's right. how I look at it. Okay, thanks, Brenda. Uh, let's start with Jermaine, who's in Vauxhall. Jermaine, what would you like to say? Um, I just, I don't think it should be mandatory. I think um, as an NHS uh, member of staff, we've we done 18 months of, of hard graft keeping the country alive, following all of the guidelines of how to avoid spreading it, being very good with sanitising and wearing masks, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the rates did go down. Um, all of a sudden now uh, we're being bullied into this situation where we're already on really low pay. A lot of the people on the team already are considering their positions with the 1% pay rise of yes. what worked out to like five pence, do you know what I mean? And it feels like we're not even on good rates. And do you know, we, we, oddly, going... the, the, as, as I understand it, and I'm open to correction on this, but the 
take-up rate diminishes the further down the pay grade you go. So, so the less qualified, less well-paid members of staff are the most likely not to be vaccinated. So, well, because yeah, we, we, you feel like you're, you're being forced to put things in your body for, for roughly less than ten pound an hour. A lot of people, do you know what I mean? And yeah, but it's medicine. Think is, of it as medicine. Fair, uh, fair enough, but you've gone through eighteen months of keeping everybody alive. And you didn't even get a furlough where people. Which, had if we'd had a vaccine from, if we'd had a time. vaccine from the beginning, then you wouldn't have needed to do oh, but that. But even with the vaccine, you're still liable to spread the virus. That's giving you a full sense you're of security. You're considerably with, less. With, you're considerably with, with, with less testing, liable to spread. You're considerably. Hey, hey, do you mean let's not talk over sorry. each other, mate? You're, you're sorry, but the, the point I about the va- that. no. Okay, well, let's carry on talking over each other then. No, no, I don't want to talk Good. over you. Good. The point about the vaccine, and and I don't understand why this line has got traction uh, it, nobody ever uh, as far as i'm aware and certainly not in the last six months has claimed that it is 100 percent effective like i understand a, that well hang on so the the, the vaccinated people are much much, if, much much less likely a to catch it and b to pass it on if they end but up majority, catching it so no don't, stop please stop because this argument is so irresponsible especially for a healthcare worker you don't understand no, why no, vac- i'm not being, i'm not saying they what i'm trying to say is that it should still be a person's choice what no they of course but the reasons you're giving for your position are important to examine jermaine it's the least i can do is respect the reasons that you give and and, and yeah. so far the reasons you've given are silly because the the idea that because it's not 100 percent perfect so you wouldn't wear a seat belt because people wearing seatbelts still get killed well, in cars. No, that's not the only reason. The thing is, it's not under... Right, give me some more reasons, then. It was granted under emergency Oh, here powers, we go. Right? No, you see... Now you're saying... Uh, OK, now you're so where... where, 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 as where, well, right? where, where so yes, it, again... Where does it stop? Well, you have to have boosters as a mandatory, and if the... OK, if the so, staff again, again, again Jermaine... Why not everyone? Again... Well, I, I can see that. I, I, I like the idea, if every MP had to have it, would you feel more relaxed? I think if it was mandatory for the nation, then fair enough. If it's just like sectors of companies... Well, let's pick on MPs. I I mean, let's just pick on MPs. You know the reason why the NHS... Well, you must know the reason why the NHS... Yeah, it makes sense to an extent, obviously. What do you mean to an extent? I mean, it's it's the same reason... Obviously, there's always going to be some people... So if all MPs MPs had to have it, would you feel better? I think it would it would go a long way to reassuring some of the public, especially with the... the, the, the I don't, I don't care about anyone except you for the purposes of this conversation. I'm interested well, in you. Personally, I've already had one of the jabs, and I'll be honest with you, I had really horrible... Same, yeah. I, was really out, I, I felt groggy for a week, but it's a hell of a lot yeah, better than being like intubated. You, you, you know it's a hell of a lot better than being intubated. Yeah, yeah. So I had I had my jobs personally. Do you know what I mean? But I, so I who are you talking about here then? Who are you talking? In general, I don't think anybody should be forced to do anything they don't want to do. I think it should be a freedom of choice. Yeah, but but we this, are forced this, to do this, things we don't want to do every day, aren't we? Yes, we're we're, we're forced not to. We're, we're not allowed to drink and drive. We're not allowed to drive without safety belts. We're we're, we're not allowed to play chicken yeah, in the middle of the M40. We're we're not allowed to drink. We're not allowed to give our children bleach to drink. I mean, there's millions of things we're not allowed to do. You start giving people people medicines under emergency powers all the time before you know every five minutes they could just but the, 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 the nothing it. is happening under emergency powers the, 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 well the, initially that's how it was released no the, no, the, no the again this these are just sort of forgive me mate these are phrases that you've heard and you haven't can i ask what you do in the nhs i'm just a maintenance guy i'm not a doctor okay but you you could speak to some doctors couldn't you yeah yeah I, why I don't you just do them. that I have, and I tell you what, yeah, at the beginning it was very scary because some doctors was like, don't take the AstraZeneca, it's causing blood clots in, in yeah, people with they they ethnic minorities, they? take the Pfizer, duh, duh, duh. that caused a lot of apprehension. It wasn't just the internet. People were getting these rumours from doctors, you know what I mean? No, some but they, they, were, but they weren't, well. Jermaine. There, there, there weren't any doctors in your hospital telling you not to take the not AstraZeneca in the hospital, vaccine. There were doctors which were scared somewhat. No, That's they were not, though. You see, you're, you're making it sound as if you had this conversation at work and you didn't. I didn't. No. Are you sure? Yes. I had this. I had this conversation numerous occasions in the first year because okay. everybody was concerned. Mate, there was, was there was there was no there, there was no vaccine. They were, they were talking about there was, was no vaccine, vaccine in the first year, Jermaine. Well, the second year, then, but well, you see, I mean, it's so it's. I, I hate having to do this to you. You, you. I know that what you're saying isn't true. I don't understand why you want to say it out loud, and then you end up pretending you were having a conversation about an AstraZeneca vaccine before it even existed. And I don't understand it, but I'm grateful to you for all the work you do in the NHS. Speak to the people in the front line. Ask them what they think about these lines that you're being fed about emergency powers or about whatever the, 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 the rest of it may be. Just go, you're so lucky you can, you can speak to these people. Excuse me, I wonder if I could just have a word with you. 
I, I see you've been on the intensive care ward today. How, how do you feel about the idea that, that vaccines are X, Y and Z and then you can repeat whatever it is that you've heard? That's all. I, I, that, that is it. I, I don't know whether this would extend to maintenance workers. I, I suspect most people listening are a little bit confused about why it's even controversial. It's the NHS. <laughs> Get vaccinated. Mary's in Brentwood. Mary, what would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. Hello, um, I just, I just wanted to say, obviously, I'm um, totally against conversion therapy. Um, Can you? I don't, I don't know anybody... what, is it, is it, you haven't got your radio on in the background, have you? It's quite not. Or... No, no, I don't. Okay, but... carry on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm totally, obviously, against conversion therapy. Um, I don't know anybody how anybody with a pulse on who's humane would be for it. Mm. But I do want to bring up a different perspective. We are talking as though that every single person who is gay doesn't, um, you know, you're not really realising that there are people out there who don't actually want to be gay. Yes. And and I think when we look at these, um, when we look at criminality and making something a law, we have to look at what is what is making it criminal before we can say we're going to make this a law. Because if you've got somebody, I know, and the reason I phoned in is because I know somebody, and they just really would prefer not to be gay. Yes. And well, so um, so would our callers really just, today. I mean, in the, in the, they've been on but, a but very difficult that, uh, journeys, but their lives would have been much have. much easier. But this person has not been, um, it's not because of um, anything other than within themselves. They just feel that they would rather, it would be easier for them, and they would rather be in a heterosexual relationship. Yes, now, but, but that's because of the society we live in, having potentially, a, hom homophobia potentially, in its can, bones. Absolutely. Yeah. The, from the majority of people, like your last, your three callers behind, which was really amazing, he was beaten up by his brother-in-law, and then you've got all these other people that, you know, had homophobia. It's absolutely horrendous behaviour. But there are people out there, James, who might not want to be, and what do you provide for them? And it well, might not be conversion therapy. It might actually be something where it's like you are able, no shame, you know, the gay community might, people might say, you sold out, you sold out, how could you not want to be gay? You are gay. But what do you say to my friend if she's got no one to talk to about it? Because, you know, and then you start trying to convert her to be, to stay, um, you know, gay. She might not want to. And I think we I have to think I, I about... Don't, I don't know that I understand what, you, what you're saying. Are, 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 you, you're people, I'm saying... Gay, I'm gay saying, conversion I'm, therapy only exists because people no, don't... No, but, OK, so, okay, so you're my... I'm, I'm my friend and I'm sitting in front of you, James. What do you say? Let's make it. This is a real. I'm in this situation you can't change right your, now. You can't change your sexuality any more than I can change mine. Okay, but what if you felt like you wanted the tool to be able to you can't. potentially it's like, date it's like someone me else? It's like me wanting. I'm a Capricorn. I, I can never be an Aries. So then, what do you say in terms of providing her with any? You just say that. So that's all you would say. You can't. You live with it. Well, obviously, I'd say a lot more than that, but I, I, this is I what know, I mean by I'm saying I don't understand the, the point you're making. Well, no, if you I'm just pause for a second, you, 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 I think, if I'm understanding you correctly, that you want to keep the idea alive that she somehow might not be gay one day. No, 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 no. What, I'm what, saying then? that you have to... Well, hear me out. What I'm saying is that you have to appreciate... <laughs> you have to... This is, a, this is a situation that isn't... You know, it's not the only time I've heard this. There might be loads of reasons why people feel the way they do. Are you talking are about sexuality now? No, yeah, I'm talking about. Well, there are. I mean, could you could could I change your sexuality? Do you think by talking to you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't feel so you could because I don't want to. No, but even if you wanted to, <laughs> could I change your sexuality? I mean, is it is it is it is it loose know, enough? I, is it hang loose on enough? A minute. Hang on a minute. Let me just let me just finish my point so that you because i'm trying to what the point i'm trying to make and i'm in this situation with a friend yes i know obviously i know sh that she cannot do this right all right but she might need someone to talk to about yes, but it that, that's counseling the existence of an organization the, the existence yes. of an I'm, I'm trying to help you the existence of an individual claiming that they can change their sexuality is evil in the context of your friend it's the worst ah, possible but, but that's interesting no? that you think that her thinking is evil what because you're, you're no, really, no, i don't her think her thought. thinking is evil she's a victim of evil because the people How claiming they can well if you pause How for 30 seconds mary i'll tell you 
She's a victim. My friend is a victim. How? Because she is being lied to by people claiming that they can convert her sexuality. She, she's oh, a so victim of con of artists. So what, do you, so what would you do? So how about somebody, so in the context of church, because you mentioned church and prayer, yes. if somebody came up and said, well, for example, in a church, you might have somebody who comes up and says, I'm, I'm I don't know, I, I struggle with adultery, right? Could you pray for me? But no, 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 no one is. No one was born an adulterer. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if well, I agree now, with now that. Now you're just being silly. Have... Now you're just being silly. No, I'm not. People okay. have. Adultery is a choice, things. Mary. It is a choice. But it Sexuality is, a is not a choice. Well, so you need to come up with a no, better exactly. example. No, that is true. But I'm just. I know. Trying to so say you need a better example. A... And the reason why well, you can't because... come up with a better example is there aren't any. No, but if you, if you think about it in the context of this person, yes, rather than I just have. giving that person no no hope, that, because at the end of the day... Well, there it is. You've you just proved married. my point. You, 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 no, you, you think there married. should be hope that she can you change can her married. sexuality, and there isn't. No, 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 no. You can be married and still be gay. Can't you? Well, yes, of course you can. You can. Have, you'll be in a heterosexual relationship and still have um, homosexual, you know, same-sex feelings. That's not that. No, and, if, and, and no. Then you're bisexual. If you're sexually attracted to both sexes, you're bisexual. Well, you might not be, but because there are lots of people who've no, got married. I'm really married. sorry, Mary. You're no. I, I've been very polite no, you're and I've been very patient, no, but you are you're talking not. undiluted twaddle, and I don't. Not, I don't know where I'm you think it. you're coming I'm from or what point I'm you think you're it. making. It's not twaddle. You're just. No, you're, I promise no. you, it is. Okay, so you're saying to me well, that in the context of my friend, I think I'm being too patient with you. I've told you a million times that your friend can't change their sexuality and by I holding know, out I'm any hope, if you just listen for 30 seconds, every scintilla of hope that you hold out to her that she might somehow be able to change her sexuality... No, she's not... She is, doesn't is, have no? the hope of... She doesn't have the hope of changing her same-sex feelings. Right. That is... That is so why have you rung is, into a conversation about changing same-sex feelings, then? you that there are people who do not want to live that way. Yes, but that's the and whole that's point the about this conversation. I don't think you've understood so, what we're talking about, and we've been talking for nearly 20 minutes. The entire yeah. conversation is about people... about the belief a, that sexuality is changeable, and B, people living in societies and cultures so where they don't want... No, I, so I've done my best. No, Mary, I've done my best, mate, honestly. No, it, I think you're copping out because I'm yeah. asking you uh, Well, I'm not sure. I, I, I think yeah, what on. you're saying. Yes. I think what you're saying. If you saying. listened, you'd know. I do know what you're saying. You're saying there's no that that, that she can't, therefore we need, she, you're actually saying she needs counselling to understand that she can't, right? Well, that's what you told me. No, 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 no. But you, you said, said, what would I say to her about this? And said, I said, you well... Said, excuse me, count, you said what I'm talking about is counselling, ca right? Counselling would help. You said, who could she talk to? And, and you're suggesting right, so a you're... gay conversion person, and I'm suggesting that would no, be the no, opposite no, no, of helpful. Said, well, then why are you no, on a phone in about gay no. conversion therapy, then? No, because you're saying... Because I said from the outset... Right, again, I'm, 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 I'm going to do a vote. I'm just going to ask everybody listening to put up their hand if they think there's any point in us continuing this conversation. Cop out. <laughs> you're copping out, James, because you're not you're not. Well, hang on, I'm just waiting scenario. for I'm waiting for one hand to go up among the one point three three million people listening and to this conversation at the moment. Because not, this is not an one. interesting point. No, it really you're isn't. Not, it's utterly it pointless. You've given me no solution. I, I literally well, have. Okay, so what's your solution then? She, if she really needs to talk to somebody about how difficult Two. she is finding her life and her feelings, she needs to yes. talk either to a friend who understands the situation a little better than you do, or to a professional counsellor, or to me. So you're saying or to me, get, get her to and ring you, me. And, and you think no, you Mary, I've, have seriously, I've, I've got unbelievable. That this is not the first time that my newfound peaceful, patient personality has led some people to get in touch with the program, suggesting that I am. Um, leaning too far now in the opposite direction from the one that I was facing when I would have cut people off or, or, or pulled them to shred. That was absolutely surreal. Absolutely surreal. Walter is in Warrington. Walter, what would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. Good to speak to you today. Likewise. Um, my, um, uh, so I'm, I'm a, uh, I probably spoke with your research, I'm a pastor of a church in, oh, yeah. uh, in, in Warrington. Um, so... We, we, we've all heard the stories of the, the gay conversion therapy of... Well, uh, Damien hasn't. Damien <laughs> hasn't, but no, I take well, your point. <laughs> yeah, I think most people, um, I, well, I presume it anyway, normally, um, but you hear the stories of electric shock therapy, even yeah. even I've heard stories of even 
fathers attacking their daughters who came out as, um, as gay. Uh, and you hear all these sorts of stories. Um, and obviously, I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. I think that's that sort of thing is, is just abhorrent and just completely wrong, as most, uh, I suppose, most, well, you say most people. Um, but if uh, a consenting adult, I know that's the term that's been used, I know the, 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 the conversation is more towards, originally the question was about the legal side of things. Yes. Um, if uh, a consenting adult came to me as a pastor and explained that he had, he or she had same-sex um, desires or feelings, whatever word or way you want to put, say it or whatever. Yes. Um, and I can't see that how me praying for them to help them overcome that, or, or again, however what you want to word that, is the same as doing the other sort of things that was mentioned. Okay. Um, then you yeah, sort of out, like you say, you're, you're questioning... Well, I mean, you're beginning on the premise that, that homosexuality is akin to an illness, which is part no, of the No, no, definitely not akin problem. to an illness. How hard would I have to pray to make you gay? <laughs> no, I understand the, 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 no, that, so I, I'm that, going to insist that, that you answer that question. How hard would I have to pray to make you gay? I don't believe it's about how hard anyone has to pray for anything. Well, all right, how often would I have hard, to pray? Oh, how how, 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 hard how hard. likely is it that I could pray you gay? From, from from my honest point of view, from yeah. my honest my yeah. honest belief, I don't believe it's possible. So how can you pray someone straight? Because well, this is how I would, if if I can I'll answer that. So this is how I would I would I would view it again from from my point of view. From my just just so uh, you know, I, 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 if I'm not satisfied with your answer, I will just ask you that same question again when you finish talking. <laughs> just no so problem. you know. So, all right. so the question so is, we, how can you pray someone gay if you can't pray someone straight? So we believe I believe that just as I would pray for somebody who is in a uh, not same sex desire, but in um, so and it, and it, it, you call straight a straight relationship. So somebody that has, has those desires towards that same that person of the opposite sex, that I would pray, we would pray together if they came to me and said that they're having these feelings and they don't want them because they want to save themselves to a marriage or etc. Yeah, it's the same as saying for me, it's the same as saying that about somebody that says they're gay. So it's not that being gay is worse or being gay is. It is the worst thing that anybody could do or the worst act that anybody could do. No, because no, they'd, no they'd still be gay. Yeah, of course they'd still be so gay. So you're just, no you're, you're, you're just going to try and get them to not have a sex life? No, 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 definitely not. I wouldn't try and get them not well, what, to have what a sex then? life. So what, are you that... praying, what are you praying for then with, with, with oh, the gay, well, yes, with the gay would, person? I, yes, oh, yes if, they, if they have come to me, so it's not something as a first start, it's not something I would go to them and say, you're wrong, I need to pray about this, let me pray for you. Yeah, if they've come to me, but like neither Lord, are you like going to say there. when they come to you. Say, well, don't be silly. There's nothing to pray for. Just, just go. You know, I, I hope you find someone to love. You're no, not. No, You're going to say, no, I'm going to, no, I'm going to help you that. fight your natural feelings. No, I wouldn't say that. No, definitely not. I'm honest. That's I'm what honest you'd be person. doing. I'm honest. That's what you'd be doing. I'm an honest, uh, honest, honest person on that one. And All I right. wouldn't say to them, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, you know, th 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 do, do as you wish. If they've come to me and they've asked me, so in other words, if they if they've been inculcated into homophobic thinking or they're victims of, of, of a culture that preaches against homosexuality and they come to you because they don't want to be homosexual or they don't want to do homosexual acts or have homosexual feelings, you're like, uh, 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 I mean, the, you're, you're basically the drug dealer, aren't you? <laughs> and like I said, when I started originally, it's not about so much just about... Yeah, but I'm uh, going to do that it, thing it, I told it, you I was going to do. If you can't pray yourself, yeah. if I can't pray you gay, how can you pray someone else straight? No, it's not about me, Prince. It's about they've come and asked. So if they want that, and yeah, but then you, as you, that, you as a as a good citizen, never mind as a man of God, you should be telling them that they've got nothing to be ashamed of, and that their feelings are natural and beautiful and God's will. Uh, but again, obviously, it depends on the uh, on, on the uh, no, on no, the no, stance on the scriptures, doesn't it? No, it, it doesn't. It's on the scriptures. Of the, are we going to do this? Bible. You want to go there? I want to? <laughs> do you want to go? Okay. What did Jesus say about sexuality? Jesus didn't, but we, if, I, if you believe all scripture is, is God breathed. No, no, I want to know what Jesus said. Just as much. I want to know what Jesus said. Get it all straight, he never said any. Didn't say he a actually, word about it, did he? He actually did say one thing. No, he didn't. He did, if I can say it. Well, if you let me. Well, yeah, go on. He said, this is, this is, this is why a man must leave his, house, his family and be united to his wife, and that's the way that God created them. No, he that's didn't. That's what Jesus said. No, he, he didn't. Did. He was talking about marriage in the book of Matthew. Yeah, all right. So what did he say about sexuality? I was just saying that a man and a woman... To, no, what did married. he say about homosexuality? Homosexuality? No, he never said a word about it. Not a sausage. So, when someone comes to you and tells you that they're gay, tell them they've got nothing to be ashamed of, and it's God's will, and that if there was anything well, wrong with it, God wouldn't have made us like this. 
But like I say, if, if they've come oh, to you come and said on, that mate. they want you to pray about no, that, no, 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 no. You've created a culture in which they don't want to be gay. You preach that there's something wrong with it, and then you think you get a free pass on being a good guy when they come to you and ask for help in resisting their natural urges. Yeah, because if you believe in the entirety of the Bible... Oh, the entire Bible. Oh, OK. You believe in the entirety of the Bible? Yeah, yeah. OK, what are you wearing? What are you wearing at the moment? Uh, a woolen jumper and a pair of jeans. What are the jeans made of? Uh, probably cotton, I think. So you're wearing wool and cotton at the same time, which Leviticus calls an abomination. <laughs> well, that's, a cult, that's, that's cultural law, not that ceremonial law, cultural uh, law. Oh, OK, right. Where do you stand on shellfish? Again, it's cultural law. Oh, I see. Law, so, so those laws are Everything not. You don't live. You don't abide by the full content of the scriptures when you're doing it. But when it's stuff you don't want to do, then it's really important. No, because I, I'm, that's not that's not what I'm saying at all. It, I'm just oh, saying oh, that it totally is. No, it's not because oh, different okay. things apply in oh, different okay. ways. Okay, like, right. Yeah. Prophets, wisdom, knowledge, sort of thing. Everything yeah. in, in, applies in different ways. Do you even but believe this, or do you just need to pay the bills? No, I, I don't get paid for being a pastor. Good grief! So you do this for fun. Or power. Uh, so, no, no, definitely Power. Not. Standing definitely in the community, not. right? Sort of things you that's, what you, that's what you get out of it. It's vanity but that's being fed. But my original point wasn't about that, any of that, anyway. Your original, original point was that if oh. someone comes to you and asks for help in not being gay, you're going to pray with them and punt the lie that something might come good at the end of it. And the idea that well, you can so, pray... No, it, it was about the law. Ah, Walter, well, mate. You're, it was you're, about the law. You're a disgrace. And the law can't you're a disgrace. prayer, certain you're prayers wrong and certain prayers right. You know it as well. I can hear it in your voice. I can hear the desperation. In your There's voice. No, if it calls certain prayers wrong and certain prayers right, when does it stop? Do you know That's what I'm going to do, Walter? I, I, I'm going to pray for you, but my God, I'm going to pray for the people you corrupt as well. I know he's a moron.